May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. You know, there's a lot more people in this church this morning than when I've ser served and supplied on other Sundays. This is a grand day. So I don't want to stop all the time and ask you to say it louder. Make sure you respond because indeed we are celebrating this day two marvelous things, a mother and a son being baptized together. And we remember that as they were named, today is the day we remember that Joseph did as he was asked to do and he named the child Jesus, that special name. Special for him, special for us, but also special on this day for mother and son. So why do we baptize? Well, for some, baptism is done. Like a relative would like to see it done, it's always done, just we do that, don't we? And some of us have a vague sense that it's, it's just something we do. Don't we? Don't we baptize? Well, yeah, it's a good idea. When's that baby going to be baptized? I've heard that a lot. Well, as Episcopalians, we baptize to accept in our lives the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we do it for a reason, so as to fashion our lives knowingly and deliberately by Jesus' life, that without announcement, we are known by our love, the same love that's offered to us over and over again, that we in turn are the light of the world. We are the light of Christ, and we offer love. Baptism is also about identity. Our name is Child of God, and it's announced to everyone who's here. Child of God, we can deny, but it can never be taken from us. We are children of God. Today, we get to see the truth in ritual. Who Noah and Michelle are, and who we are. If Noah or Michelle ever have a time in their life, together now or later apart, a time when they wonder if God really loves them, they can look back on their baptism and remember the promises made, not only by themselves, but by those all around him, to always remember God's promise of love and be assured that the answer is yes. Baptism is first about our identity. It's always not, not always easy to accept that we're loved by God when we see what's happening in our world but there's where we step in. Many a times I have said to people who said, I can't believe this. God wouldn't do that. I said, well, while you're, while you're having a tough time with it, I will carry it for you. That's what you're called to do too. When it's hard to be find love in the world, I love you and I will carry the truth for you until it feels better. That's who we are also called as the baptized. Baptism is about God's activity. We are God's and we are actively loved. No ifs, ands, or buts. In baptism, God seals us with the promise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit to be with us always. The cross of Christ will be made on their foreheads and I will say, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as God's own forever. Baptism is the active affirmation of God's love and God's forgiveness. Nothing can ever change that love nor make it go away. It's a gift. There is nothing we can do to earn love and forgiveness. There's nothing we can do to unearn it. Every baptism we attend and participate in, I'm looking out here beyond the baptismal couples, extraordinary pro promises to live our lives, we grab onto that, I hope, 
the awesome assurance of the guidance of the Holy Spirit, how beloved we are by God without merit, how do we support these people in their life in Christ? I'll be saying that today to all of us, as we will promise today and at every baptism. How do we support those who will guide these persons? Support for godparents, support for sponsors, support for children and adults, for one another. That's what godparents and sponsors first say yes to. They're charged. They hopefully are chosen for their commitment to Christ, to be concerned, and as they emphasize what it is to be a Christian, to remind parents and family of their special commitment. Maybe they'll send a card. Maybe send a card once a month. It's a spiritual card that thinks of them as more than mother and child, but as children of God. Maybe they'll have a party once a year. They're going to receive candles today, lit from the Paschal candle, to light every year on their baptismal day. January 1st, that one's easy to remember, folks. Get the candle out. Okay. Who knows what else they might discover when they take on the commitment to support them growing in faith. For Michelle, her baptism will be complete. Her promises made, her life focused on how she will follow Christ with her life, what she does, what she will plan for, how she will forgive him in the worst times. You know, when they get teenagers, it's sometimes hard, eh? Yeah. For no other time will come when he is asked if he agrees with the promises made today by parents and godparents. That's what we call confirmation, to confirm. When a young person themselves confirms the promises that are made for them, for Noah, at his baptism as a young child. Before that day comes, their story and your baptismal stories are important throughout your families. Bring it to mind. Write it down in a paragraph or two. I'm looking out at you guys, too. Write it down. Has anybody ever told you what happened on your baptism? Do you have a memory or someone you can ask today? Write it down. It was an important day. Parents, tell your child why you picked that name for Noah. Share what you remember about your baptism. Of course, many don't, but see if you can find out from your parents what that day was like. Remember stories to tell your child. Parents, godparents, sponsors. This can be a time of asking yourself about your baptism get equipped and inspired to not just celebrate your child and a friend's baptismal anniversary, but to ask about their walk with God throughout the year. What's your walk with God like? Sometimes it can feel darn lonely. Ask yourself where you get that support for your spirit. In the worst and best of times, sometimes folks outside the family are the ones to tell them, who they really belong to, to that God loves them and forgives them beyond a shadow of a doubt, to know the light of Christ. Enlightened, knowing that heaven is not coming, but heaven is here, makes us more aware of what we do, what we decide, and how we will live that. That heaven come on earth, as it is in heaven, we say in the Lord's Prayer. That heaven come on earth, that heaven come on earth. Jesus left us that with the imperative and remembered in our baptism is that's up to us with God's help. Not God will, would you please do this, but how are we moved to do that? Baptism never ends. 
We all have those commitments and those promises to one another, with one another. Baptism is entering deeply into solidarity with Christ, who is gifted with a holy wisdom, his life as an expression of holy wisdom. Hmm. Baptism is entering in a particular way into friendship with God. The needs of the world are so great. There's even needs right down there, right now. <laughs> and for, for him, it's great. The suffering and pain in the world are horribly extensive. The lures of the world so seductive. For us to begin to see changes in the world, we need to be the change in the world and it cannot happen unless we are changed, unless conversion of life and morals become the pattern of our lives. But even though we are aware of pain, suffering, unknown futures, the status quo is kind of irresistible. Why change what we know? It's the air we breathe, the food we eat, the 6.30 news, our institutions, theologies, and politics. Even at its worst, it's sometimes easier for us to accept things as they are. Even at its worst, we shy away from the change that our baptism calls us to. Yeah, it could get worse, but you know, it could get better. So often we have excuses around those imperatives for our life. The Cathedral Church of St. Thomas of Canterbury, also known as Portsmouth Cathedral in the United Kingdom, did a reconstruction of their church and they simplified it. It had been a, a parish church before it was a cathedral, so it's not very large. Matter of fact, it's not much bigger than this church. They did a reconstruction of early house churches those first two, three centuries. And what they have at the door, they have a walk-through font. It's low to the floor. You could sit on the edge of it. The steps into it, an adult or a priest, if they don't mind getting their feet wet, can go down into the font and come up the other side. It's really spectacular. And I have a picture of it with me today if you want to see what it looks like. The candidate for baptism can walk into the water or sit on the edge to be baptized. A priest can take a baby down to the shallow steps. And I've seen over in Washtenaw County two Roman Catholic churches who have been a new church and a revamped church that they have done that. They have a very large baptismal font that people can actually be in, like the early church. Well, you know, some clergy even baptize in rivers and lakes. I didn't even bother to ask, would you like to go down to the river? <laughs> There's a wonderful hymn for that, too. They push the candidate down into that water, and I've seen a, a bishop do it, all in white. Push a candidate down the river. You know, if everybody uh, swum in a lake or a pond, you know how dark it gets real fast? You go down and then bring them up into the light, sputtering. Is he ever going to let me up or she? Around that Portsmouth Cathedral font are inscribed the words of St. Cyril of Jerusalem, who was a theologian of the early th third century church, whose focus was baptism. Don't think fancy like we have today, bishops. Think of somebody who's living near a church in a community crude house. These are his words, and this is what they have inscribed around the edge of the font. When you went down into the water, it was like night, and you could see nothing. But when you came up again, it was like finding yourself in the day. That one moment was your death and your birth. That saving water was both your grave and your mother. Water is both frightening and refreshing. 
life-giving. The baptismal font symbolizes a death through which we must pass into new life. Baptism is life changing, new life coming out of the water. The only way we of the world will break its hold on us is to be transferred into another dominion, to be cut loose from our old certainties, to be thrust under the flood and then pulled up, pulled forth, fresh and newborn. That's where baptism takes us. Don't lose sight of that. There was baptism before Jesus. It was for purification. They came frequently. John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, but he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Down into the water and pulled into the light. Dying to old ways and coming into the way of Christ. Love, kindness, mercy, goodness. Well, you know, baptisms, as I said earlier, live beyond this day on the anniversary of Michelle and Noah's baptism. They'll light the candle, I hope, that was first lit at your baptisms and tell one another, Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus' light is in you. What was it like getting ready to come to Trinity that day? What did they sing? When you give Noah a bath, talk to him about the water that was poured on his head and at his baptism. Tell him he's a child of God and that he'll always be loved and forgiven. Before Noah goes to bed or leaves the house in the, in the morning, make the sign of the cross on his forehead and say, God made you special and I love you very much. I know people who do this right at the very time that the child goes out of the church. And out of church on Sunday and out of the home. And I said I'd come back to you guys, the rest of the church here. You can't overlook the congregation as well as the leadership of Trinity. You are both witnesses and renewers of your baptismal covenants. You'll be asked, will you by your prayers and witness help these people to grow into the full stature of Christ? That is probably the best goal that a vestry can have. Any child baptized, the ones who haven't come here yet, the adults who have not been baptized, it isn't just for these, whether they're here or not, young families tend to move about, but the first goal of a, of a vestry is how will you work to support people and invite people to Christ? To grow in stature, to know God's love, Christ's wisdom, and the assurance of the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, I can tell you from my years in chaplaincy in major hospitals, there are people who are searching for meaning in their life. You can listen to their story, you can tell them yours, and you can hold hope for them when they find so very little. All the baptized, whether here or coming from beyond these walls, your responsibility is legion to grow the faith. I can promise you it will demand much of you and such a journey will be different from your past. And your response this morning, you may doubt it a little bit now, why do I want to say this so loud? I will with God's help. With God's help. We will live into our baptismal vows as a community together. Well, we have no river or large font, and we certainly don't have good weather, Nonetheless, let's go down to the river of baptism, for in baptism is both your death and the world's ways, and your birth into new life, child of God, beloved by God, Christian. Let's go on and baptize Michelle and Noah.
And I ask them and their sponsors and godparents to come to the first step here. 